Okay, ladies and gentlemen, y'all are we going? It's going to be about this Slavy tribe. So let me find right quick. Give me a head in the cloud. So y'all see, we're going to be talking about Slavy tribe. All right. So let me go right here right quick. Says etymology from French is Sklav, a Kalke of a Cree name. As the Cree called these people and several other traditional enemies, slaves. Okay. In English, the final E came to be pronounced as if sli- uh, slave or a native name. This pronunciation was first written Slave and later Slave with a Y. <coughs> Alright, let's see what else I got on this. They're gonna be too heavy, you know, just bullet point type shit. I don't know how I pulled it off. But anyway. It said, are the Dene, just looking to the Dene people. All right, it said, the Dene people are an indigenous group of First American nations who inhabit the northern Boreal and Arctic regions of Canada. So it sounds like the northern, the North, North Pole, northern Borealis. All right, so let's go back here. Let's go into a little bit of wiki. Give a brief understanding of the people right quick. So it says Slave, also slave, and South Slave. So when we talk about this, the Slave word or slave word and all that, we know one meaning of the word slave, which is not Slave, but it's spelled the same. They did it with what we would call pale people, Slavonic people, all that. <coughs> but then we have here what they were calling a whole tribe of quote unquote Indians. Slave, which also translated to mean, well, not, not translated to mean, but also could be mistaken. And to be slave. So, there was people being called slaves. There was an Indian tribe. <coughs> and this was the name of the tribe. So, could it be possible when they say that the Indians had slaves, that they were talking about this tribe name, tribal name, and not an actual person coming from Africa or Europe, people coming from Africa or Europe to be enslaved. That's just my thoughts. All right, so let's say these are First Nation of Indigenous Peoples of the Dene group. Indigenous to the Great Slave Lake region. Slave Lake or Slave Lake in Canada's Northwest Territories. So keep in mind now, we talk about these so-called First Nations. As I'm starting to understand, is that we're talking about Canada. We're talking about Canada. Canada, Canada, Canada. Northwest Territories. So that's where these people was, around the Arctic Circle, around the Hudson Bay. Hudson Bay, North Pole, Arctic, Eskimos, stuff like that. That's what we're talking about. Eskimos and all of them now. All right, so let's keep it moving. So it's a Canada's Northwest Territories, right? And extending into Northeastern British Columbia and Northwestern Alberta. 
So across the whole Canada, basically. Okay, let me see what this says. Let's mention something about Slav here. They say Slav, Slavic people redirects here for the European ethno linguistic group. See Slavs. Okay. Now look at that. Now you see how they got the Slavs across the whole top, right? It says Slavs are the largest European ethno linguistic group. They speak the various Slavic languages belonging to the larger. Balto Slavic branch of the Indo European languages. Slavs are geographically uh, distributed throughout northern Eurasia, mainly in ca- uh, inhabiting central and eastern, look like I said, Ethiopia or some of the Re- Eritrea. Hey, but y'all see how deep that's about to get. You know what? That might clear up a lot. Let me just saying that. Let me, how do I get that? So, listen, y'all, check this out. So I want y'all to pay attention to this because uh, it's seeming like these people came from Alaska and all that anyway, you know what I mean? And came from across that water, probably over land, some type of land bridge and made their way on from the top on down to the bottom. And I think everything below that was dealing with the Negroes. Yeah, buddy. Because uh, y'all see how concentrated it is over there and then how full it is on the other side right by Alaska all right so these these uh people that come through the Bering Strait and all that type of stuff that's what I'm saying all right but not let make not to make the video too long but y'all see what they're saying they're separating it's probably the same people but they're separating it from European from the Europeans versus the Canadians or Alaskans or whatever right but let's keep it moving so I think they're the same people. All right, they say, um, let's keep going down. They say that the, the Cree exonym, which is slave, right? They say Slave or just Slave is a tra- translation of the name given to Dene, right? Given to Dene by the Cree, who sometimes raided and enslaved their less aggressive northern neighbors. The names of the Slave River, Lesser Slave River, Great Slave Lake, and Lesser Slave Lake all derive from this Cree name. Esclaves remains unincorporated in the French names of these geographical features. Since the French traded with the Cree before the English did, The people now called Slave in English were not necessarily taken as slaves in that period. Okay. So they weren't taken as slaves in that period. The people that was called Slave. And then you peep that they say this name Slave was a name uh, uh, given to the Dene, right? By the Cree, who sometimes read it and enslaved. They're less, uh, less, less aggressive northern neighbors. All right, you said the name Slave is seldom used by the people themselves who call themselves Dene. All right, so they really call Dene. They say indigenous antonyms for South Slave people and language are the uh, Deco, Deco Dene, Mac, uh, Mackenzie River people, or Dene Tha. <coughs> Though most Athabascan peoples call themselves Dene, those in the Northwest Territories tend to use it for their particular group specifically. However, the Northern Slave was also known in English as the Satu, while the Southern Band are known as the Deco. So you have a Northern Band and you have a Southern Band. And I don't think it go no further, no, uh, I don't think it go past 
the Arctic and all that. They probably farther up, but yeah, the Northern Band, I guess, is around maybe around the New York area and shit, Maine, all that. All right, so let's see what else I got over saying this. So it's a, uh, I think I read this already from a Slav, Kake, Cree, as these people, several traditions, uh, in the UK, Canada, you yeah, I read that already. So the next tribe, to read a little bit about them real quick. I'm just going to read a little bit about the next tribe. They say uh, the Dene have existed for over 30,000 years with one language and many dialects. Gwichin, Satu, Deko, Deko, and Akako. The Dene have always been sustained by land, by the land. Now listen, I want y'all to understand too that basically these are the Plains Indians we're talking about. When they were doing all the fur trade and everything with the French, it was, a, it was a lot of fur trade going on with the French. And later, the English came. But for the most part, as it's stated in history, is that the French was pretty cool. They weren't really doing no tripping, no bullying and all that stuff. Like, they were just cool for the most part until they started clashing with the English and all of them. Then, you know, a lot of dirt start getting kicked up is what I'm thinking. What's going on? Uh, let me see if anything of any important. They don't have much to say, as it seems. Okay, but um, then they die. There actually means, you know, the land of the people for the most part, located in Northwest Territories, Canada. The Dene Nation covers a large geographical area from present-day Alaska to the southern most tip of North America. Okay, so I guess there was no reason to go into that. All right, you had these people called the Inuit people, okay? So it's a, the, the people, make it so y'all can see right now, Inuit, all right? They say the people, singular, Inuit, dual, Inuk, are a group of culturally similar indigenous peoples inhabiting the Arctic and sub-Arctic regions of Greenland, Labrador, Quebec, Nunavut, and Northwest Territories, and Alaska. Inuit languages are part of the Eskimo Inuit languages, also known as Inuit, Yupik, Anagon, and also as Eskaluit. <coughs> So to let you know these Inuit people are uh, who you would basically call the uh, who we would call the Eskimos. All right. And it was if you rocking with the content, tap that subscribe button. Around Greenland and all that. You know, that the Europeans had hit Greenland for uh for a little minute too, supposedly from across the water. Came over here. It was on Newfoundland, England, uh, Greenland, you know, shit like that. Probably even Iceland, which is right next to America, of course. So, all right. So, yeah, I just wanted to point that out who they were, who they are, and stuff. Y'all are probably bumping to them. Y'all start doing research, y'all bumping to some more of this. But just to know, that the Eskimos is the same thing as the Inuit, the Inuit. All right. Still on some Canada stuff for the most part. Let's see what I got right now. Same thing. Go back again. Same shit. All right. So boom. Now we got the Cree. St. Maurice River. All right, so now the Cree, I think I read this, though. I guess I did not start with Slavic. All right, it say the Cree, uh, et cetera, French, are a North American indigenous people. They live primarily in Canada. 
where they form one of the country's largest First Nations. In Canada, over 350,000 people are Cree and have Cree ancestry. Okay? They call themselves Cree and they say they have Cree ancestry. But, of course, these are white wash ones and all that. All right, it say the major production uh, proportion of Cree in Canada live northwest of Lake Superior in Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, uh, uh, Alberta, and the Northwest Territories. It say about 27,000 live in Quebec. In the United States, Cree people literally lived from Lake Superior westward. Today, they live mostly in Montana, where they share the Rocky Boy Indian Reservation, the Rocky Boy Indian Reservation with Ojibwe or Chippewa people. Okay. <coughs> so I say they, they share reservations and all that with the Chippewa. And we know these are some dark skinned people as well. The Chippewa. And uh they said it was from Lake Superior. Westward or westward, I think they superior. That's probably around like uh, Detroit or somewhere like that. I ain't sure. All right, but they say the documented westward migration over time has str- uh, been strongly associated with their roles as traders and hunters in the North American fur trade. All right, so that's when you get the Europeans getting their feet wet, super wet or established on American soil is when they really got into the fur trade. Is when they got uh, uh, became invested in the fur trade. So for the most part you had the, the Hudson Bay Company doing all the trading or, or putting uh, or, 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 being the middleman for the Europeans in the north to deal with uh, the Indians or, you know, the people that was here already. The Cree and them. Which I think Cree is probably, it's probably Creek. That might be a representation of Creek. <coughs> but I don't know. Jugging my brain, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, it was they was, was trading, the fur trade was popping. The uh, Hudson Company ended up taking it over. If you know the French had a, a lot to do with it, then you know they end up beefing Britain and Fr- uh, France. They end up getting in war, having a war, split things up. All right, so let me keep moving. There's something about Mar- Saint Maurice, but I don't think it's the same one. So now, you know, say, uh, say the inhabitants are in St. Maurice River Valley of Quebec or whatever. So that's why I highlighted that. I had pulled them up. That was a bad boy, too. And yeah, it said something that was pretty interesting. Let me go ahead and go into this. Show. And that's, of course, of all this, all the way 100% accurate because, you know, this wiki, people can switch up things. But I think the, the, the content, like the main idea, is always going to be pretty much on point. You know, they might probably, they might uh, exaggerate some of the details, but I don't know. But when you cross reference and you look at other things, see what match up, what don't, then, you know. But it say St. Maurice, also Mauritius or Morris or Mauritius, Coptic, was an Egyptian military leader who headed the legendary Theban religion of Rome in the third century. That's like 200s. <coughs> and it's one of the fa- uh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, y'all. And it's one of the uh, one of the most 
well not most, it say and is one of the favorite and most widely did say most uh, venerated saints of that martyr group. He is the patron, uh, patron saint of several professions, locales, and kingdoms. For the early life. It was something that he had said to, uh, yeah, I was right here. Okay. Well, let me go and read this here. So early life, right? According to the hydrographical material, whatever the fuck that is, hydrographical is a biography of a saint or ecclesiastical leader, as well as by extension, an auditory and idealized biography of a found of a founder, saint, monk, nun, or icon in any of the world's religions. Early Christian hagiographies might consist of a biography of Vita. It sounds like some shit they could make up and put in a... Anyway, so listen here. It said, according to the hydrographic material, okay, Maurice was an Egyptian born in 250 AD in Thebes and ancient city, um, an ancient city in Upper Egypt. That was the capital of the New Kingdom of Egypt, 1575, 1069 BC. He was brought up in the region of Thebes, Luxor. Y'all know who we get luxury from and all that. Now, this part is pretty interesting here. Take it with all with a great take it all with a grain of salt, though, y'all. Let you know his character. They say Maurice became a soldier in the Roman army. Well, no, nah, it might be a, it might not show here. It might be another piece I want to look into to size this up. But let's see. They say he rose through the ranks until he became the commander of the Theban region, uh, legion, thus leading approximately a thousand men. He was acknowledged, he was an acknowledged Christian at the, at the time when early Christianity was considered to be a threat to the Roman Empire. Yet he moved easily within the pagan society of his day. See, that's not, that's not. Now, I want y'all to peep the game right there now. It said he was a Christian during the time where Christianity was perceived as a threat to Rome. So obviously, the Romans were not celebrating, or I mean, was not uh, following Christianity. All right? So that mean they had some other gods. So people gain now, because this is for, before the Constantinople of uh, Constantine in the 300s and all that, and the Nicene Council and all that stuff. All right? So, yeah really true well <coughs> he made through me through it but he was not a pagan no one's this citation either all right the legion entirely composed of christians had been called from thieves in egypt to gaul to assist okay here we go it said the legion entirely composed of christians had been called from thieves in egypt to gaul to assist Emperor Maximian, uh, Maximian in defeating a revolt by the Bagadi, Bagada, uh, Bagada, something like that. It say the Theban Legion was dispatched, or uh, was dispatched, or uh, dispatched, yeah. No, we always say dispatched, but it dispatched with orders to clear the great St. Bernard Pass. Y'all know y'all got St. Bernard Parish in New Orleans, right? Across the Alps. So he got the call, right? Uh, Maximilian was like, hey man, I need you to come, God damn it. Air out the St. Bernard Pass across the Alps, man. You know what I mean? I got you when you make it to me. I got your bread. And they say, before going into battle though, right? they were instructed to offer sacrifices to the pagan gods 
and pay homage to the emperor. All right. It said Maurice pledged his men's military allegiance to Rome. Okay. Watch this. He stated that the service to God superseded all else. He said that he said um, he said that to engage in wanton slaughter. He said that to engage in wanton slaughter was inconceivable to uh, Christian soldiers. He and his men refused to worship Roman deities. Okay. Is that now? I'm here to do a job and do a job only next to kill people. Huh? So you point them out. We go get them. And that's that. But as far as following your gods and all that, I ain't doing none of that. So that's what it sounds like is going on. So that's enough about my reach. <coughs> so there's some kind of picture I pulled up. I think it's showing some Indians and all of them. I don't know why I don't get no bigger than this, but uh, you catch the drift. So dark skin. You know, whatever, whatever. Like that. You know, I found something kind of, uh, pretty interesting, though. And that's uh, these wigs. I was looking at these wigs, right? And a lot of these wigs look like these pictures that they have. It's like, did they just grab some folk and put some wigs on their head and say, hey, see, look, these Indians here. Look, all these are wigs, believe it or not, y'all. Look, wigs. Trip me out. So I'm like, hold on, man. Wait a minute. I don't know, just a thought. All these wigs. Look, even these motherfuckers, they wigs. These here are wigs. They're all wigs. They're wigs. And they say the history of wigs come from Egypt. That's what they say. When I look into the history of it, so them folk were living in wigwams up in the north. I think in the side, it was nothing but Negroes like us doing our thug thizzle. And then you had the different kind of little, you know, all in the other area, all in the other areas of the land. And we had a trade network going all the way around. And everybody was connected. Had a system. But anyway, I ain't trying to do a lot of speculating and conversation. But anyway. All right, but y'all, y'all see where I'm going with it with the wigs and all that. A lot of these probably was wigs. Okay? Okay. You see that? See all that? Wigs. All right. So, there's that. Now, these supposedly are, I think I Google Creole or something like that. This would be like some French Creole. Some kind of Creole or something. Forget what the name said. But it's just Chief Joseph and family members. All right, so I see that. Look like the typical. I don't know why this shit popping up. Get up out of here. All right. I think that might be it for y'all. So let me see if I can get into a couple more details over here. Look at the Denny thought real quick. So I say the first, uh, say the, the, the Denny thought first nation is the first nation's government of the South Slavic in Northern Alberta, Canada. The people call themselves the Natha. Sometimes spelled Dene Tha or Dene Tha or ordinary people in the Dene Tha language. 
ordinary people, right? Its population is centered primarily in three communities, Bushy River, Mindy River, and Chate, formerly known as Assumption. But approximately 600 members who live off reserve. Then the Thaw First Nation is Treaty 8 Nation and a member of the North Peace Tribal Council. Uh, the main idea is just to point out, excuse, excuse me again. The main idea was to point out that when they say that, uh, when they say the Indians had slaves, it could have been Slavis. Right? And of course, we know the orphan train and all that kind of stuff came through. But Imagine them saying the slave did slave that, and they or and they really saying the slave is this and the slave is that that was already here, and they just like switched that shit around and threw the European twist on it. Cause you know, uh, I ain't gonna say that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep that in. All right. But I think for the most part, dealing with this Slavic thing, dealing with this Slavic tribe, I think I gave y'all enough to go follow up on what I'm saying. If y'all had not heard of it, I heard of these people. There's a pretty interesting backstory on it. For the most part, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. It's like every time I cut this thing off, I'd be like, man, I could have showed them this here. I could have showed them that there. But at the same time, I ain't trying to spoon feed them. Let's see what the definition. Okay, now listen. If you rocking with the content, tap that subscribe button. You see how Slave, right? We know it's Slave and the breakdown of uh, Slavey. Uh, you know, I guess how you say it. That's a long I E, right? Long A A. Slavey. I guess how you say it now. Nah. All right. So, and it say a maiden, especially a hard worked one. Okay. For one definition of it. In the now sense, another now. It say a member of a Diné people of Northwestern Canada, all right? And they say either of the two languages, North and South Slave, spoken by the Slave or Slavi or Slavi. How do you pronounce it? They say re relating to the Slavi or their languages. Now, it says translating Cree or Wakan, and it means captive or a slave or slavey. Okay? So that's why I'm saying when they say slavey tribe or whatnot, or whoever was being called this here, were they put in a subordinate position and when? The Europeans, so-called Europeans or whatever, came over here, whoever came over, regulating, took advantage of these uh, people called that. Because it's always like you just put a name on them up and if everybody go for it, that's just what you is type thing. Like you had beef you know, the, the north against the south beef, beefing against each other each other you know had a big conglomerate of different people in the Diné group you know what I mean you know how it go you got the own little sections and all little sectors you had the ones that was further up north that was Getting these guns and everything, all other other type of stuff from 
the people that was coming in, they were trading with that the people from the South probably didn't really know. And then the ones in the North start being the middle man. You know what I mean? For the people that didn't know that was coming. So they were dealing directly with the folk, like I got a lick. And they would be in the plug. And they were being able to go all around the United States. You know, all the different trials and networks that was going on down in the South, just like it was networks going on in the North, right? But it was probably some people, uh, some networks in the South that was able to, they would, of course, the networks of the uh, North was connected with the networks in the South, but they was keeping Bogart, uh, the immigrants from coming and penetrating the South, basically. As much as long as they could to continue being the middleman, like I'm saying. But then it got to the point to where the North started becoming more powerful because all the guns and all the help and all this different type of stuff they had going on, and just started penetrating and bogarting, putting that pistol on people for the down south. That's what I'm getting out of the information when I read about it. So basically we start getting robbed. And uh, honestly, I don't think we got taken over socially, politically and all that type of stuff until the 1900s. Us meaning the Negroes of the Southeast. The Negroes of the Southeast, you know? And I, I say the Southwest too. Down in Mexico, all that. The whole middle America. Meso, um, uh, Mesoamerica. Right? I even go as far as say even the islands and all that. Yeah, you might have had the little pockets of uh, Spaniards that were down here and French people that were down here kicking it with us, doing their thing with us, but they was trading with us. It wasn't like we had to follow nobody else's rules and that we were following any, any anyone else's rules. <clears throat> and it could be quite possible that many of us have bloodlines from those people as well. The French and the Spaniards and the, the Bretons and all them motherfuckers, the Englishmen, you know. There were definitely a whole heap of Negroes from every facet of reality, I suppose, doing business. All right, but uh, not to get too far off into all that. I think I gave y'all uh, enough, man. Like I said, uh, so I'll give y'all a little visuals. Where it's a uh, Southern Slav, something like that, Slavis. Trying to go to some, probably gonna go to some maps or something. Let's say, uh, say when, all right, let me see something. Let me see something. Let me see, Slave River. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going ahead and put it. All right. And that's crazy how they called it the goddamn Slave, uh, slave River, though. That's, that's crazy. Great Slave Lake, that's what it was called. Great Slave Lake. And I need to show y'all where the Hudson at. Just in case y'all don't know. It say the uh, Slave River is a Canadian river that flows from the confluence of the River Des Roaches, Roaches and Peace River in, in Alberta and empties into Great Slave Lake in the Northwest Territories. The river's name is thought to derive from the name for the Slave group of the Dene First Nations, Deganak Gedegadni, something like that, and Abaskan, all right, say the Chippewaian, and displaced other native people from this region. All right. 
they say the Slave River and the rapids around Fort Smith, okay, are some of the best whitewater kayaking in the world. There are four sets of rapids, pelicans, rapids, and down, uh, drowned. They say uh, rapids are the drowned. They say uh, mountain portage and cassette. The rapids range from easy class one on international scale, difficult to fuck all that. All right, all right, all right. So y'all get that to see where shit. Let's see where it is. Coordinates. Let's go to the maps. See if I gotta click on this here. Try to see where it's at though, man. Somewhere over here. Somewhere over here in this area over here. On this side. <clears throat> and we know that um, Britain was at the top of the Great Britain. So let me pull up. Uh, uh, let me pull up. Uh, Hudson Bay. Hudson Bay. All right, so check it out. So you got the Hudson Bay right here in this Canada. Let me put it on the real maps. Come up. Come on. Now this is Lake Superior. You remember they had mentioned uh Lake Superior one time already? So we talking Lake Superior, we're talking about Minneapolis and Wisconsin. And in all them places. I think I had said uh, uh, it probably was Detroit, but I probably was wrong about that. So you got Antar Antar Ontario right above that, though. You got North Dakota and all that. So when they say Lake Superior, they talk about the so called United States for sure. Then, you know, they're saying Quebec. You know, you're getting y'all familiar for the people that don't know about uh, what it is. Oh, I want to mention too, when they were talking about the Gaul, we already know that's the Celtic people. So it's like the Bretons and all the motherfuckers, the, the Ireland, all the places, you know, I know what I'm talking about a little bit further up north. It's not exactly Rome is what I'm trying to say though. But I think the Gauls did have a portion of uh, the area at one point, but yeah, initially Gaul are related to the Celtic people. places at that they be talking about. So let me show you all too. Let's see. See right here, you got British Columbia. You know what I mean? This section here, British Columbia. Got the A, B, S, K, M, B. Right, so that's Ant Ontario. This is Manitoba. You see what it is. Alberta, remember they mentioned Alberta a lot of times. Alberta, so all this here. Alberta, so they're talking about all up here. It's what it seemed to be where they was regulating. And then there go your Hudson Bay, right by all that. All right? So it's like they first came in through the Hudson Bay. And you got Newfoundland that has a lot of history. So that's Newfoundland over here. I'm just trying to get y'all familiar with the areas that these people came in at when they're talking about the Northwest Territory and uh, Central and all that, or uh, well, Northwest is over here, I mean, uh, when they talk about Northwest, Northeast, Central and the Plains and all that, they're talking about all up here. It's, okay. That it had nothing to do with nothing down here, except for eight. All right, y'all get it? 
And, and I mean, these relationships was going on for a long time. And then we talk about Greenland. When they were talking about Mint Greenland, look, Greenland right here. Look, you got Greenland, then you got Ireland, then guess what? What you got? I mean, Iceland, then you got what? France, Germany, Austria, Denmark, all that shit right here. Spain, Portugal, it, all of it is right here. Right across the water, boom, Iceland, Greenland, come through the Hudson Bay, and that's how they start getting in. Well, from Iceland to Newfoundland, remember? I mean, from Ireland to Newfoundland, or Spain, any one of the places, right on over here, boom. Nova Scotia, no Nova Scotia means New Scotland. All right, they, they right here, they float there, right on across. Everybody know about the Portugal and all that. Everybody know about Morocco and they talk about the Moors. All that right on the coast, right on right here, Mauritania, Mali, all this shit. So it's right across the water. So ain't no way in hell people ain't been trading with each other for a long time time and vice versa people going from over here to over there you know what i'm saying people are already going from over here to greenland of course iceland right there right when over there to iceland boom when they see iceland you know they see norway and sweden and all this shit boom they go right over there now they trade you know to me that is common sense but i don't know all right so now we're talking about late superior i was showing y'all Oh. How and uh, how this is all in the same sentence when we talk about period, right? Uh, got late, well, okay, it was late Michigan, so you got late period right here. So of course they found their way through here into Lake Huron, Lake Michigan. Yeah. So of course you got all these places, got this place. Then what you got London right here? What's up with that? You know what I'm saying? So when they say London this and London that, are we talking about across the water London? Are we talking about right here? Okay, then we I see Miss, uh, Miss Agu come up quite a few times. And that's right by Toronto. So all this is really a part of the United States, Toronto is. All of the land is connected. It's connected to Michigan. Michigan is more down there. Uh, Michigan is more than what? With Toronto on uh, latitude line or longitude, whichever one it is, to go across horizontally. But um, yeah, so you see that being at Detroit right here, boom, got Detroit right there at the Lake Erie. You come on down, come through Detroit, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, New York, all this shit right here. That's um, all right, so you got the, the, the Missagoo that's already in the Lake Ontario, connected to New York and all these places. Rochester and all that. So all this stuff started being taken over. Then right uh, in the same Lake Erie, right right by Bo, huh? you got Ohio. Okay. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on up here during this time when the uh, first people, first immigrants came over here. Whole lot of business popping, whole lot of shit going on, whole lot of trade, whole lot of network. I don't think it was anything new. But uh, when the disaster started happening across the water for like starvation and famine and all that type of stuff, if all that's true according to history. War and all that, people still had diseases. People uh, began to come over here by the boatload. And yeah, our system was already set up, so they had no trouble but to find work and all that. And then find a way to penetrate the political system that was going on. All right, but yeah, as we can see, got Ohio and all that type of stuff. We go on so on and so forth. And you know, most of these places ain't, ain't, uh, ain't as far as we think. That's Chicago right here, right? Right above Chicago, you got Milwaukee, of course, right? Green Bay, all this is water. We know we've, we were traveling on water back then. So, 
Yeah, I'll be stuck looking at this for a minute. I like looking at the map stuff. All right, so let's see if they got anything deeper about the Intuit that I need to go into. Of course, we're talking about the, they got Eskimos. and So it's kind of like a recap. So I got the main thing over with. So let's go into the Arctic Ocean. That's one thing I want to go into. So yeah, let's see if we can go into uh, the Arctic on the map. Well, let's go into it and I see if we can. Let's go into it. All right, so now. Uh, see, this is all this basically what they call in the Arctic. As you, as we can see, the Arctic Ocean is back with Greenland and all that. Okay, I think it's different too. See, there's a whole Arctic Ocean up here. I don't want to show it. Why not? I don't know. But with the stuff, see at the top right here, they say Arctic Ocean. Then you got Russia, right? But we know technically Russia will be on that side too. So it's letting you know the shit flat and basically connected right here. That is what they would call a band straight or some shit. I don't know. But yeah, you see Alaska is right here. The Intuit people is from Alaska. It came from Russia, Alaska, shit like that. Came on down to, to, to the Northwest Territory. That's where they came from, from Alaska. Uh, places over here, Russia and shit. Siberia, right? Came across, hung out right here in the territory for a minute. Bitch to the Hudson Bay and shit, right? British Columbia, all that stuff. They came over here, followed behind them, fucking them up. You know, making their way down. People come the other side, like I said, but all down here. Negroes. It's uh, I think from, you know, out of all this was Mexico remember back then anyway. So what they call Mexico, all the way over. All that shit was Negro, and we let the light skinned people who we were dealing with forever in these areas deal with the folks that were coming across the water. And they start getting slaughtered. And I think they teamed up with them and helped out. See, because you see from this side, you got China and all that. So you got the Chinese, all them people, the Russians, all them motherfuckers. They've been over here. They've been coming over here. That's the Barren Sea. You see what I'm saying? Right here. All right. You got the Philippines, all that shit. It's right here, right across the water, though. Okay, so you see why you have, why you why you had the Filipinos and all these people right in Mexico and all this shit. Look, yeah, you gotta connect the dots. All right, so people that would have been coming from this side, like I said, all these people would have been coming over here with all this shit up in here, what about all up in here? All right. All right, so you see what they're showing? The map of the Cree dialects. So all the Cree people was in these areas. Okay. Um, they were the one that were dealing with the beaver. We hear a lot about the beaver and all that type of shit. And you had Ojibwa. You see where they were at. Okay. And the Chippewa. All right, it's a, um, it's a first nation population surpassed only by Creek people, uh, Cree people, all right? So the Cree was the most, uh, had the most people. 
Then they mentioned something about the Iron Confederacy, right? The Iron Confederacy or Iron Confederation was a political and military alliance of uh, of Plains Indians of what is now Western Canada and the Northern United States. This confederacy included various individual bands that formed political, hunting, and military alliances in defense against... Yeah, I wanna show this page for some reason. All right, but well, there was as y'all there was showing there was you know defense against uh or whatever they had their own military and government and shit though that's the point. Uh they had their own government and military and all that. Uh with all that being said, I think that's gonna pretty much do it. Yeah, until next time. If you rock with the content, peace. Tap that subscribe button.